guys, how's it going? Today's video is about holly tone plant food, but I wanted to give you a little bit of context first because this video I'm about to show you, we actually made for Espoma's website. That's where this video is gonna live, but I thought that you guys might be interested in it as well because I've used it a lot in my garden. I've talked about it before. So what I wanna do is play the video for you and then I'm gonna come back and give you a couple of additional thoughts. Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today I wanted to talk to you about holly tone fertilizer. So basically what it is and how to use it out in your garden because I use a ton of it out in mine. So it's a natural and organic fertilizer that's not just for hollies. It's actually good for all acid loving plants like blueberries, camellias, rhododendrons, evergreens, hydrangeas. We'll actually leave a list, a more complete list of plants at the end of this video if you're interested in looking that over to see if you have any of those plants in your garden that could use this type of fertilizer. So first of all, you wanna apply holly tone twice a year, early in the spring and again in late fall. The difference is in late fall, you'll just give half the amount of fertilizer. So now I wanna go out into my garden and show you how to apply this to different types of plants. I want to show you on this blue spruce first. This falls under the tree category, and there are instructions on the back of the bag for every category of plants that you might have in your garden. Um, basically, what you do is you figure out the diameter of the trunk of your tree, and then you give one pound of fertilizer for every inch that you've got. So to figure out the diameter, all you do is you measure from one side of the trunk to the other side of the trunk. Um, so it looks like I've got about an inch and a half trunk here, which means I'll give about four and a half cups of fertilizer. I like to apply the fertilizer using my drill with a hole auger. So I'm gonna drill holes every two to three feet around the drip line of the plant, which is basically where the canopy of the tree ends. Then I'll take the fertilizer that I have measured out and I'll evenly divide it among the holes. I'll backfill them with soil and then water it in really well. As a side note, there are two very common types of evergreens that prefer a non-acid based type fertilizer and those are arborvitas and boxwoods. And you would want to use plantone on those rather than hollytone. Shrubs are quite a bit easier to apply the fertilizer to because there's no digging required. All you have to do is apply one cup of fertilizer for every foot of branch diameter. So I'm guessing that this hydrangea is probably about two, two and a half feet wide. So I'm gonna use two and a half cups of fertilizer. I'm gonna sprinkle it around the drip line of the plant. I'll work it in with my fingers and then water it in really well. For established beds, it's super simple to apply. All you need to do is use about five pounds of fertilizer for every 100 square feet that you've already got. And by established garden beds, I mean an area where you've already got plants in there. I've got strawberries here. Um, so this area is only about four by four, which is 16 square feet. So I'm only gonna need to use about two and a half cups of fertilizer. So I'll measure it out and then I'll try to, as evenly as possible, sprinkle it around the area where my plants are and then I'll water it in. Now for new garden beds where you have nothing planted and you're just preparing the soil for planting, you actually use twice the amount of fertilizer. So for 100 square feet, you would use roughly 30 cups or 10 pounds of fertilizer and you work it into the top four inches of soil and that gets your soil all prepped. Now there might be other instances where you're using um, holly tone in containers, like I have blueberries in containers. And what you do is you use one teaspoon of holly tone for every three inches of pot diameter. I've got my blueberries in about a 20 inch pot. So I use roughly seven teaspoons of holly tone and I just sprinkle it right along the outer edge of the pot inside the pot on top of the soil and then water it in. So hopefully this video was helpful just seeing a few examples of how you should use holly tone out in your garden and on what plants you should be using it on. So thank you guys so much for watching and good luck with your plants. All right guys, so I'm hoping that that information was helpful to you, but now I wanna share how I use holly tone specifically in my own garden. And this is off label, this is not what Espoma recommends, but it is a way that I have been successful growing a few things. So in the video, I tell you not to use holly tone on boxwoods and arborvita, but to use plantone instead. And I think for the majority of you, I mean, you can't go wrong. Use plantone on them in any soil situation and they're gonna do wonderfully. In my area, we are so high alkaline that I feel like whatever I can use something more acidic, like an acidic based fertilizer on, it's gonna be better for the plants. It'll help condition the soil uh, and my plants respond beautifully to it. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that about my soil and why I use holly tone a little bit differently because you will probably see me use it like that in the future. And you'll be like, hey, didn't you do that video on a Spoma um, holly tone and you told me not to use it on boxwoods, but you're using it on boxwoods. That is why. In fact, this spring, I even posted a picture of myself 
fertilizing my arborvitaes and I had a big bag of hollytone. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you guys know that because um, soil composition can vary so greatly. And you know, if you don't know what kind of soil you have, it's a really good idea to ask somebody at your local garden center. They should know what kind of soil you're dealing with. That way you can kind of tailor how you're using your fer fertilizers. It's just something that my parents have used forever. They've used Espoma fertilizers for years and years and years, and that's how they used it. So that's of course how I started to use it in my own garden. And we've had really good, great results with it, but I just wanted to explain to you why we use it that way. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.